So the players means the players of the project. If you involve it in development in any role, like management, developer, QA, DevOps, this everything will be touching you as well. All right. So we know everyone the agile, the great thing, and the Scrum, what appeared a little later. Um, and is it good? Is it good or not? I guess some of you see the number of YouTube videos explain why it's bad, why it's good, but nothing brings to replace that. Okay, so we ask him simple things. Why PO, product owners or product in any, any role, composing epics and stories, which are actually tickets, which, which are actually tasks for the developers? Why the tasks are shared for execution for different departments, different teams, like front-end, DevOps, and so on. And that pain, time fixed sprints. So let's get a little deeper. OK, this is classical one. Uh, this diagram shows the relationships between everyone in development process, we have a client side who is a product manager, the product owner, the creative one, creates the stories for that group of happy developers, which called team. And team, thank you very much. Team decides how many we can take that stories into the implementation. Wow. Uh, is it only thing they should think about? How many? Interesting. The Scrum Master, that's a specific role. He do nothing, actually, in development. He controls that happy team. They are smiling now. Let's see what will happen after three, five years of that. This crazy stuff. When client bring you tasks, what to implement, and you have to, because if you start questioning, and saying that this is a shit idea. We have to do it in proper way, in another way. Or it should be implemented based on implementations that we have been done in a year ago. We have a basement for that. But no. At this moment, when developer happy guys start asking us reasonable questions, the Scrum Master came in. Man, you are not following our philosophy, you know? You have to think, is it your correct place? And he will be replaced easily because the client, because the product. So this is kind of, you know, that feedback thing. It should work in both way. And currently, we see the product owner leaves the ideas to implement and no feedback back because the Scrum Master worked there as a barrier. Okay, so many companies work like this, and uh, they work, at least. Money is going, money flows, keep money flows, it's okay. And something is deliverable, actually. It's not about the quality at all. It's about the fact of delivery. So, from our observations in our large studios where I'm manager, we know that this idea, this diagram, this kid level diagram actually can work on simple things, really simple things, routine ones, uh, not affecting um, the complex solutions. When you have a services, services oriented architecture, when implementing, implementing one of those stories could affect things which was implemented years ago. So this is it. And the teams, that happy guys, are keep working in that sprints, exhausting. Okay, so who is the adult in the room? Who is actually do engineering? Who knows what the system engineering is? Nice to see at least two hands. Great, three. Nice. Before implement anything, 
We have to design this in blueprints. We have to understand the scale of the effort. The efforts is a good point worth in your synthesis. Uh, how it affects on infrastructure, on the clients, on different other features, which will be which actually in production, and we bring something else. We need someone who will say that this is this is not what you want, client. Actually, you want this, and show him the idea how it actually should be implemented, how in the world it's implemented right now, today, which technologies should be used for it, how the scalability will affect it if we're going to grow our product and make it global. So who knows the answer on this question? This is a good sign as well, because no one from these options shouldn't do that. So, simple thing. I, I guess everyone can read, but I will repeat. Client tells what they want. And design team, design team, designers, uh, the most advanced engineers in your company should design their solutions before implementation. They tell us how it can be done, or can it be done completely or not? And this is very important thing. We have a product team who are paying money, who get investors, who have all that stuff, what they're operating for. They have a vision of their desired feature. They see it very sharp and clean. They know exactly what they want. So, design team, other hand, engineering, expertise actually, which are actually the best what you have for every department you have. It is better to pay more money because to get the best, best people, because in long distance term, it will save a lot, a lot of hours and resources. And it dramatically affects on the quality of feature. Okay, so this looks simple. The guys have an idea, desired feature. Design team trying to understand to see the same, the same in the same detail from other sites, from different points, uh, asking the questions, asking for clarifications for every specific detail, which actually products didn't assume that this is important at all. Technical engineers can ask the questions that products don't even think about that questions. It's obvious thing. This is two universes. Engineers and um, not engineers. Let's say it like this. Okay, so if we build that relationship and clients see that level on, of involvement of your people and that daily interactions, of course, they should pay for that, and that cannot be part of sprint, fixed time sprint, because it's, it depends on both sides. The client can delay the answers. The client can continue uh, working on documentation for engineering team. As this is process of negotiation, the third thing that we have to complete to see the desired feature on the same, pay, on the same way like we like see it product team. At some day, when we decide that we're on the same page, we go on further. And now we go to development. The, so design team, which are actually uh, the best for each of the department, they start to produce the assets for engineers, actually. So it's not more business stories, with a lot of stories how user can click somewhere and what will happen then. Developers get tech stacks, tech tasks from lead of their department, like lead backend composing tech stacks for backend devs. On their language, with a clear vision what to do for each of the developer. How obvious is this? A lead QA start composing user cases for QA engineers to test the desired feature. DevOpses have attached tasks how that feature will be delivered and uh, 
roll it out, maybe on stage environment, on QA, all that things, all the preparations of infrastructure. Going further. So that idea that every engineer start receiving the tasks from his colleague, more advanced colleague, show us that something should be changed. So this is typical story workflow on Scrum. Uh, it could be different for everyone, of course, but this is just a common one, assuming that we have a client who is defining a backlog, doing prioritization, uh, developers, the uh, green, green blocks doing implementation itself, by letting QA start working, so next QA is working, UAT review, it's mean client review, so they test, test it as well. And they decide that it's ready to deploy. And, dev and DevOps doing that release. Okay, sounds good, right? Nothing, nothing special, it's okay. It's like we're working. But what in the story there? There is a backlog, so the client bring us a lot of description for that thing. We have a feature which is required front-end and back-end developer work on the same tasks, on the same story. They, st they start just messing around for each other. There's the too much people working on the same stuff. And what of the content of that task? What is the story content? It's huge, it's huge. Uh, some days I just try, I was trying to find a place where I would will write note for developer, just add that element. Don't pay attention to everything above that. Find my, find my note finally, find this. And this is clear what you have to do. It's simple. And after that, the client says it, why are you modifying my stories? Because the developers should understand what to do. It, should be, it shouldn't be on daily stuff. We should compose the stories for each of the developer. One story, one developer. That's it. It's a simple. So, yeah. I guess everyone knows what Mr. Ford invented. And this is how it works. Uh, this idea. This is how we did work, and this is actually a game-changing thing. Uh, firstly, it's presented to me by Mikkel Plotkin. Uh, he calls it Pumpkin methodology. Um, we did work together for a few time. Okay, so let's imagine that the product has its own board with the stories. They Gathering everyone, bringing cognac, going to sauna, you know, and tell let's let's bring new feature. They start forming that feature in the proper in the way they want, in their board, in their stories. Not engineering board, not dev board. No one else sees that board. This is their sandbox. They can imagine it everything they want, no problem. But finally, they grow up and bring some product specs, specifications. They bring it to engineering team, design team, who actually has his own board. So the product specs analyzing, each of the specification is analyzing, uh, discussing, iterative uh, clarification, all that stuff. And later, engineering board producing epics and tasks for other boards. Development, QA, operations. For instance, how does that simplify QA work? Uh, we know the product, we know the product specs. We have design team where a lead QA understand what the feature is about and how to test that. Not related to technical implementation, but related to vision of the client. So for the developers, it could be a hundred of tasks, but for QA, it could be just two or three test cases, uh, which are actually checking that the client will receive exactly what they did expect. This is expectations management part. Um, 
And operations board, this is completely different thing from development. They need infrastructure updates, how it could be delivered, how, where data should be stored, which interactions, in where, how, and uh, how many uh, limits and the quotas we have to update on IVS, on Azure, whatever. This is totally different information required to make things done. This is why it should be separated. And the thing is, the most concerned thing which you have to pay a lot, a, a lot a most of attention. So you see, everyone got real Kanban board. Very simple. To do, in progress, done, stopped, that's it. Very simple, each developer happy. But this work only if the workflow is connected in a proper way. Each of the board have a product at the end, different one. Okay, so this is black boxes. This is a pro pro product of the, the department. For instance, engineering provides epic, epic tasks. Developer provides software build for testing for QA board, QA board produce and approve or reject, and it's iterative thing, of course. And ops board make and delivery. That's it. You have separated workflows, but with, but with clean understanding what exactly each of the board produces. And if you can automate all that transition moments, uh, this is it. This is a dream. This is how it should be. Because of, just to recall you, we have engineering board now, engineering expertise, design team, who produce some technical tasks for each developer, each department, and everyone got what they want. Developers get tech-focused tasks without business <laughs> stuff. Okay. Let's go further. Um, simple question. Um, when? When is that built feature? It's, it's built, it's okay. When should it be delivered? The first option is great, right? When sprint ends. Okay, so it should be date time. When should be delivered? Yes or no? When spring getting into? Like, someday, when it's good feeling, when it's done, definition of done by client. This is my favorite part, definition of done. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so anyone sees the correct answer? Of course, there's uh, not too much. Yeah, you have a, yeah, say it. Which? Are you actually on the same page with me. When is good feeling for engineer? Because we know that when it came the good feeling. It's good feeling when product did form solid vision, design team did break down to touch text, dev did implementation, of course with QA participation and uh, clients uh, QA as well. QA did approve, UAT passed, the client tests that and he looks, he's sure that it is what he want to get. It's not, it's not pushing him to approve because of daytime. He can say it at the moment that, oh, we have to review a few things on that product. Uh, let's go to step one. And it is okay because it's, uh, it's process. We get in money, we implement and things. It's okay. It's okay. We can go back and rework after they see that it's not what they want. Okay. But it's not fitted to time, to date. It's fitted to when it's everything ready and when we good feel. Yeah, I did count. It was not, not complicated. There are seven human factors. And how we can predict the date and time when it could be delivered. Taking into account that the most influent player on the project is the client itself. How can Clients say that it should be done at 1st of August, for instance. Um, I have to say that this description is about 
normal development, uh, normal future developments. Sometimes we have a situations when it has to be done at 1st of August, sharply, by legals, by, by laws, by anything, signing big contract, big clients, it happens, it's okay. But this is completely different story. This is the date which has a sense to complete that. That sprint thinks doesn't have any sense because they tell us that we should deliver a content when it's day appeared. Like spring came in into. We should bring a product when it's done by our definition of engineers. Um, Okay, actually, this is it. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, if you're interested, yeah, questions, everything, but the idea here behind is uh, way more complicated. It's just an uh, overview of that idea. Uh, we're working on hard on all our studios to bring that understanding to the clients which are actually not engineers. We bring a real products for um, global companies with a um, very hard audit, audit and uh, certifications and checks for the major brands and major clients. The client, our client have clients like Microsoft, Google and some of military companies who have a strong audit for our dev DevOps, for our quality of code and, uh, and so on. Uh, so on that level of implementation of business, at some moment clients start listening to you. At some moment you've got a reputation that you know what you're doing, looks like you know what you're doing, and there is a confidence appears. That first step in development where design team and product team interacting every day, each other, this is the moment when trust built, the confidence to each other. Without that, it will come to the that happy product owner who managing that happy developers team. He go into micromanagement to be sure that this is uh, happened what they think about how it should be, and he is not even an engineer. He think that he knows how developers should work, but he is not. So. The most important thing, that Scrum Master thing, it's totally phased out, it's not required anymore. If you have a professionals and uh, technical managers, that PM, that product managers, uh, should be technical background. They should actually grow from a developer to the management thing. And we're working on that way in LR. Uh, in this case, we know how developers are working, what they need. They don't need dailies. They need technically focused tasks without any disturbance from outside. Don't try to make introvert guy to bring out to the um, dailies and tell us what you did yesterday. Tell us what you're going to do today. Everything that is reflected in that statuses, in that stories. He doing that specifically for you to give you understanding where he is. He has a team lead as well, so he should know the same thing. Do not disturb the developer, give them what they want. It's obviously a thing. Okay, so, so yeah, if you're going to look into discuss it more deeply, I'm open, uh, we can schedule some meeting and we can get into some particular examples um, and so on. So thank you for your attention and uh, yeah. <laughs> Any questions? Okay. Questions? Hi. So, but what if we have strict deadline? What should we do then? What if you have that, right? Yes. Grow up. Grow up. Find the power of the essence and idea to explain that to the client side. Find uh, evidences that w that was affected on quality of code in previous tasks, previous sprints, previous history. 
show that evidences and uh, explain them explain them this one uh, sprints yeah it's about 70% uh, of that uh, company's work on scrum thing surprisingly <laughs> yeah each player <laughs> yeah sad to say sorry for you man with the sprints looks like for now Except this one. Thank you. Which said, how a team can like achieve such structure? For example, I'm a developer. What can I do so that in my team or in my company, for example, this would be important? Yes, you have to grow up again. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry, but you should. So me as a developer or company as a whole? You should be part of that design team. So you have to say the company, the essence and the idea of the design team. Design before implement. Think before doing things. So when you grow up, you will be able to explain that to the um, stakeholders, owner of company and so on. Maybe CTO. CTO should involve that deeply and he should understand that lacks. Yes, please. Thank you, man. The disadvantages of that way, like we're doing? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, this is a good question, actually. Yes, disadvantages. What is bad in this technique? Look at this. This is brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> what is the disadvantages? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I feel uh, like you don't have any pains in this. Um, the, the thing is that the company has, has to be grow up again because they should have a, a CTO, the proper CTO, who is responsible for technologies. Uh, they should have technical project managers who actually can dive into the particular commit of any developer in the team and ask a question, what is this about? Uh, as this is another level of relations between project manager and DevOps and dev teams, because it's built by confidence. Everyone not setting deadlines anymore. So this is very, very good soil for doing nothing on developer side, right? Or doing very slow. Uh, the, the company should have a people who have expertise, like technical project manager, who should trust anyone in a team, but feel first when someone is lacking of production, because he can go into and uh, understand the technical part of that story, what he's doing. So it costs a little more when you have fancy product managers from some, in, I don't know, some uh, skill box factory or whatever. <coughs> yeah. It almost answered my question and, and the last one, sorry. Yeah. Uh, what do you think the minimal size of the team should should be like to follow this route? Like I understand it's like yeah. startup yeah. and five people and Yeah. It works the same. It works the same idea. So actually you have a I don't know, you have one front end, one back end, one iOS, one Android guy, right? One for each of competence. So they are all a part of design team. The main idea is to start thinking before implementing things. So you're building startup. Uh, there was a guy, uh, some Roosevelt Washington, I guess, and um, the, someone asked him if you have uh, six hours to cut the tree. He said that five hours I will spend to make my instrument sharp. Five hours of six, you should do preparation work. It was like uh, actually in the big countries, <coughs> USSR, when it was a project, build, build, uh, big projects like uh, 
electro stations, uh, the big atomic nuclear stations. There was a design at first. There was thinking before, and that could take years to prepare all the documentation, to start working on multiple factories, hundreds of factories to produce some of the piece which actually gathering together at the end and it's produce energy. So that, that knowledge of previous, our predecessors, is lost. That run every two weeks, it lacks um, blind kitties in a black room, you know, trying to find and do something. And some days they can do, but it looks like um, a very unstable product which will be crashed at some day. Some day you will be unable to bring any new feature because it affects and broke anything else. Uh, for short stories, it could work, but not in long distance. Yes, please. Thanks. Very appreciate Welcome. Yeah, thanks for the talk. Uh, quick question. Maybe it's um, maybe a matter of uh, different titles, but on your diagram, the part of the main part of the engineering team is Lead backend developer and lead frontend developer. Where yeah. is the architect? Yes, good question. As you see, uh, this design team, uh, so it's PM, it's optional CTO, it's optional architect as well. It's optional DB operations, it's optional uh, game developers, what, whatever, but architect, yeah, that should be taken there as well. Uh, but actually, CTO can do his work if you don't have architect in company. But the yeah, idea behind that, in that design team should be involved most advanced, most engineers in your company. And if you have architect, that's great, include him and use. In a proper way, actually, this is his job of architect. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, I think that will be the last question. Uh, thank you for a great talk. Um, most of your answers uh, sounds like growing up. Uh, can you say from your experience statistics of successful person, uh, successful person of growing up and uh, how much time it usually takes for company and for person? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of pain? Yeah, we try and... We yeah, we're trying to uh, analyze the situation based on approach, on technical approach. The, the, how much the marketing behind that? A success or fail or market? How much is the region where you start is effects on that product? How much legals and laws and criminal background of your owner plays here? <laughs> and how much development team on background of all of that stuff uh, can affect that percent. I guess this is a question of luck, nothing else. Uh, you can do build a fast project like startup, POC, PO, proof of concept, and proof of work, they're using that scrum, two weeks, sprints. Again, that sprints works for simple things, simple products. When you have a vision completely and share it across Okay, we just do mechanical work, uh, technical things, not, not, no imagination required, no analytics required. Everyone knows how and how he go, going to implement that. So, yeah, you know, no percentage here. Different products, different situations. Thank you. Yeah.